Hello, greetings, everybody. I uh, make this video to address this question, which we find at least the time I'm making this video from assignment 4.3, which says find the area between the curves. So I'll put this aside and I'll say as a disclaimer, um, although I'm going to make a video specific to that problem, uh, you would need to see this video I've already posted about how to find the area between curves in a general sense. So that video explains the basic setup and considerations that we have. Okay. So that's my disclaimer about where we would need to begin. And I won't really say much about this video because I've already posted it and it's something that you can look at. Okay. So back to this one. Uh, one thing that we would need to find is that in order to calculate the area between curves, uh, we would probably start by looking at the graph. All right. Uh, the reason is the setup and procedure depends on which curve is above which other curve. Okay. So we've got all these curves and they intersect and contain area and space between them in different ways. But the way we would do the calculations would depend on which curve is above which other curve. Okay. So <clears throat> what I did was this there. Now there are different ways the students might produce this graph. I, I can't say anything that's going to apply to everybody. Some students may have a graphing calculator. Some students may use something online like this. So what I did for the sake of the video was I put everything into the Desmos calculator and I produced the graph you see here. Now I, took a screenshot of that and I put it over on my whiteboard to show you what to do. Now, I want to rephrase the question in terms of this picture we're looking at. When we read this question, it says find the area between the curves. Uh, what does between mean? I mean, you, I see equations like it, it doesn't say find the area between the equations. It says like, visually, if you could see these equations as graphs or curves, what's the area between them? Okay, so here I have all of those curves and I have a key here about the colors. So in red is X is equal to negative five. That's a vertical line in blue is X is equal to three. That's this blue line in purple is the line Y is equal to 10 X, which you see there. And in black is the parabola Y is equal to X squared minus 11. So now that I can see this, I, I can understand what you mean by the area between the curves. So like that would be this region. See how the curves like close off this definite space. Like, and I called it region a, if you were in here, there's no way you could leave this space without crossing over one of the graphs. So part of my answer would be this region a right here. The other part would include this region B. Okay. Notice if you're in this region B, you're like on top is the purple line below you is the black uh, parabola and to the right is the blue line X is equal to three. So those are the regions that are between the curves. All right. All the curves. This region isn't because there's nothing on top of it. This region here isn't because there's nothing underneath it. If you could like just look at every space and uh, region and so on, A and B, as I have labeled, are the only regions that are contained on all sides by the curves that are given. Okay, so here's the breakdown. Um, I'll calculate the area of region A and B separately because the way that we set up the problem depends on, as I think I said a minute ago, which curve is above which other curve. So region A is characterized this way. Uh, the parabola, which you see in black, is above the line, which you see in purple. That's true for region A. So when we set up our integral to evaluate it, we put the equation for the parabola and then minus the equation for the line. It's whatever is above minus whatever is below. Then we have boundaries. So when we look at region A, it goes from one place to another along the x-axis. So region A would be 
defined or characterized as going from what's in red here that's like the furthest left region uh, that's negative 5 so the lower bounds negative 5 and then it goes over how far to the right well to that spot you see that spot right there that's how far to the right region a goes it's where the purple line and the black parabola intersect each other whatever that point is the x coordinate of whatever that point is is what my upper bound needs to be so you could think of this as above minus below and left right okay above minus below left right so looking at the graph it's a little hard to tell exactly where the purple line and the black parabola intersect so let's pause for a second and we'll need to know the intersection okay that number is part of the setup of our problem so you can find that intersection by just setting the equations of the parabola and the line equal to each other and then solving it however you would solve that kind of an equation different equations are solved different ways in this case I can solve it by factoring I'll get 11 which is just nowhere near where this a point this point appears to be that points a negative number it's left of the origin and 11 would be like all the way over there well it's, that's not where it is maybe they intersect some other space but at least as I'm looking at this now it's not at 11 okay so I get 11 or negative 1 negative 1 is the number that we're seeing okay all right so so that uh, leftmost point is negative 5 that's where it begins and on the right the furthest rightmost point that we see in region a is at negative 1 okay now from here we evaluate this definite integral we do that with the antiderivative okay and then we put the upper bound in which is negative 1 and I'll get these numbers I do a subtraction I put negative 5 in to our antiderivative I get these numbers and I do the calculations from there and I get 352 over 3 now this again is one of these things that everyone might do differently if you have a really simple calculator uh, this part might involve you uh, dealing with each and every number okay if you have a more advanced graphing calculator then it would make this part easier so I wasn't going to elaborate too much about this if you're having trouble once you get it set up and once you put your numbers in if you're having trouble with the arithmetic or your calculator from there let me know and I'll address your concern individually but let's just say like you could look at this right now try putting those numbers in see if you get 352 over 3 if you do then you've done it correctly okay so that's region a this is the physical size or area of region a now the rest of it would be region B region B is characterized this way the purple line is above the parabola which you see in black so in other words y is 10x is above y is x squared minus 11. now remember how we set it up we write our integral we put the equation for whatever's whatever's above minus the equation for whatever's below I was careful to use parentheses here because that minus that subtraction would apply to this entire thing whatever it is so that negative distributes all the way across okay so I got above minus below what were the bounds of the integrals that was left and right so as far as region B goes where does it begin on the left and where does it end on the right that's what these numbers would signify well it region B begins where region A leaves off which is negative 1 so I put negative 1 right there and then it ends on the right at whatever this blue vertical line is which is 3 okay so my boundaries for my definite integral are negative 1 to 3 all right so that's my setup remember I told you though that negative applies to this whole thing it distributes so I get negative x squared and I get positive 11 okay from there I find the antiderivative again 
Uh, I put three, the upper bound in, I get these numbers. I put a subtraction, then I put the negative one in. That tool or that technique for evaluating a definite integral, meaning find the antiderivative of what you start with and put the bounds in in the way I've described, that was also covered in a previous video. It's called the fundamental theorem of calculus. So putting the three in and then subtract, putting the negative one in, these are the numbers I get. And I do the arithmetic from there, I get 224 over three. Now, to give the final answer, would be to answer, answer the question, what's the total area contained between the curves? Now, I identified that as two separate regions, A and B. The total area contained between the curves would be however big region A is plus however big region B is. So I take my answers, 352 over 3 plus 224 over 3, add them together. The total area is 576 over 3, but that divides nicely into 192 exactly. So that's why I put, as you saw when I had this question up here originally, 192.